the interview with Forrest, which is on your YouTube channel, and I highly recommend it to everybody listening. If you haven't, I'd be shocked if you haven't listened to it already, but if you haven't, definitely go and give a listen to it because it was really interesting stuff, a one-on-one with Forrest. But um, do you think that uh, Forrest, if he were placed onto a Tier 1 team now, do you think he could still he could still bring the heat in a meaningful way, or do you think it's wishful thinking? Do you think that it's just it's the, the, the age is too much? I mean, he gives the reasons himself. You know, he's like, he's getting older. He's got a family now as soon as you have a family it starts to have an impact on in terms of like how much time you can fully commit uh, commit to the game the way that the, the young guys who are unattached um, can so like do you think that Forrest he has the raw talent to be able to come back and actually if he had a crack on it if somebody was willing to take a risk to to, to perform on a tier one team or do you think that that's just a uh, it's a it's an illusion I mean SDY won blast playing on Navi and he's much worse player than Forrest. So if it depends on how good the team is. The problem is that's exactly where this whole discussion becomes not very interesting because Fierce Clan isn't gonna recruit Forrest, are they? Like they're not gonna. So that's off the table. Is G2 or Vitality gonna recruit Forrest? Of course not. Why would they? Like so the problem is the the real question is if Forrest joined the kind of tier one team that would sign Forrest. Would they be really good? No, probably not. Because at that point in time, he's actually probably going to be like, what, their fourth best player, their third best player. And he's probably going to be, what, like a 1.02 rating player or something. So no, that if you know how teams work and how frag distribution, that's just not enough. So now look, if for some reason, but there's just no reason, it would just be to help out a legend. It wouldn't be for competitive value. If you replaced him, with, or if you put him onto FaZe Clan or you put him onto G2, could he win? Well, yeah, of course, because he's playing with like fucking Nico and Hunter and he's playing with in this case, maybe twists and fucking brokey. Like they could just overperform a bit and he could just do a job. He could just be a basic entry or something. The problem I have is this. I think that's the part where people get lost because they really do think, imagine if Forrest was unfair. What would the point be? It'd just be a worse version of Fares. What you should imagine is this. What if Forrest played on Ents? Now there's an interesting topic, right? A little org that doesn't have that much money, so they can't get top, top players. They're a top 10 team, but mainly by virtue of the fact that, like, they had the Spinx lineup, and, you know, people think they'll just maybe nick back in at ninth or 10th. Now, if they had Forrest, and he was, like, say, an entry or second entry, yeah, he could probably do a decent job fragging. He wouldn't be a star player. He'd just be a role player. But you could do that. You could you could be, like, what someone like Dupree is on Vitality, you're sort of a semi-washed legend, but you still can apply a little bit of experience here and there. You got in on that team. You've got fucking Sphinx and Zewu and all the guys to frag out yeah. in Vegas. So you don't need raw fragging. Now you can just add a little bit of something else in. Maybe be a cool guy, one less ego in the team, and then you can win that way. But the problem is, I don't think most people when they talk about that scenario imagine, wow, imagine Forrest on Ents. I think that would be cool. I think they're imagine, like I say, a big, big team, and it's some like it's some like last dance dream of like, oh, and then Forrest wins them. Like Rain, like he wins the major and he's the MVP. That's not happening. I think that's a pipe dream, unfortunately. That's exactly like who would you if you're talking about having to make the investment over a period of months as well, because you're not expecting to get an instant return once you're making roster changes. So you're talking about a team like FaZe, like Navi, like an elite level team making that kind of investment in force. I think you're right. I think it, it just completely falls apart. Like you would be you it would be in a rebuild phase. Like, do you think that Forrest actually believed in that Dignitas roster? Do you think that like that was that that was like No. I mean I don't, I don't think anybody involved in that could really believe that, that was going to be something that takes them to tier one. Here's the problem with that. One, as far as I know, the fix was, I'll just say it, the fix was in on that team. What happened was, as far as I know, like Fifth Larum was going to work with like Dignitas. And so he just, he just told Dignitas, who had like new ownership at the time, Here's a unique angle. Instead of us just having like an okay team that no one cares about, what if we could have an okay team, but it's all legends because it's NIP, it's four of the five, and they're all going to come back and they agree to play for you. And if you remember... Fifth Laren and all the NIP players had done a great PR job for three or four years before doing interviews with people like me and others, and they would always say the same line. It was mainly like the management that cut that fucked us over. And because the management fired Fifth Laren, that ruined our vibe, and we didn't want that. And then because the management didn't pay the money out, that made us all stressed and pressured, and maybe we would have won the first major if they had. And then the management did it, blah, 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 blah. and then... At the end of it all, the implication was supposed to be, well, now we're going to be in dig. That's not nip. Now we're going to have another chance to reunite so we can do it all without the... And then what happened? Look, they only played online, true, but it was just trash, wasn't it? It was like, that team was just garbage. It wasn't good. Forrest was okay. 
the holes that was like sort of good and then the rest were just whatever like they're all semi washed washed it's getting progressively worse so i think that move for real that was by the way I'll even give credit to the Brazilians. That was the real last dance. A fucking scam where you pretend you have a chance to run back a legendary roster, but it's way past its well, past its sell-by date. And even worse, you get paid over the odds to do it. And then when you produce no results, you just go, what are you going to do? And just fucking rizzle dizzle off with the bag. So like, I'd even say Imperial's better than fucking Dignitas was. And I don't, I think Imperial's a disgrace. So yeah, sadly, I think that whole thing was a waste of time, mate. Like I actually think that's the silliest thing Forrest ever did in his career was the Dignitas lineup. Because that was the moment after Nip. You remember how Nip ended at the end of 2019 where they were at the global finals and for Blast. Forrest was still playing half decent. He was like the best player or one of the best players on the team. Him and Rez probably were the best two players, right? At that point in time, he could have gone to like a mouse sports or something. Dude, they would pick him up in a heartbeat. Wouldn't that have been interesting, right? Imagine Forrest on like a top tier. I mean, obviously then I'm saying, I'm, I'm thinking of like the later ones, not the one with Carrigan. Obviously I'm thinking of the ones that were like the Dexter ones where it was like Acor and Rose. And of course Forrest could be on a team like that. That would have been a chance to have this last leg of your career where maybe, you know, you're the third or fourth best player, but you can win something. You could have a chance to do it. Now he's waited too long, unfortunately. Like you'll notice he said all this stuff in interviews, but... There's not even rumoured stories. There's never, there's not even a story. Maybe this team will... Like, no one seems to want him. Unfortunately, it's not me doing this. This is where I hate how fake pro players are. You know the same pro players who'll tell you for years, oh, respect for us. So he could still frag now. Put him in your team then. Yeah, Put exactly. in a good word. Nobody's doing that, dude. What they're doing is they're doing what all scumbag orgs and players do. They go, oh, he would be... You know when they let a player go themselves? Like they'll cut like Lecro and they'll go, but he'd be so great in any other team. Not yours, though. Nah, nah, nah. I want to win. So, But your you know what? He should go to your team. And then let's hopefully play you in the quarters at the major. Yeah, exactly. put him on your team. Like, fuck off. Why are you, why are you GMing my team with worse players, motherfucker? <laughs> Especially because like, it really is painful to think about it because uh, he probably would have made as much money as he was making on Dignitas had he been somewhere else, you know? So the idea at the time was like, oh, he's finally making the bag. He's finally getting some money, you know, because like Nip, they weren't getting, uh, they weren't getting um, the industry standard in terms of uh, salary at the time. They were way below. And so, you know, they joined Dignitas and you're thinking, oh, they're finally going to make some money. But you're right in the sense that he could have probably gone anywhere else and not done that project, gone anywhere else and still made that money. He probably actually could have been in a competitive scenario. The, the real question is whether or not he can find himself, like if he actually wanted to try to make that sort of comeback happen, it's not going to be in a tier one work, but could he do like a Shoxy and join a team like Apex? You know, bring that kind of old, that, that kind of experience to a, a younger roster and try to help guide a younger roster, you know, uh, uh, to, uh, to a higher level just through, through experience yeah. alone. I'll tell you something controversial. So uh, get ready, player.gg and cybersport.ru. Here's your headline, motherfuckers. Even though I like Forrest, I don't feel sorry for Forrest what happened within Nip. And here's why. He stayed there for seven years, Semler. Yeah, he could have bailed. He, even worse, like what people will say is they'll say something naive. There's two angles. He was loyal to his teammates. So in this case, get right. Or when it was in the past, get right and exist. Or when it was in the past, get right, exist and forest, right? He was loyal to his team. No, he wasn't. How was he loyal to Fiflaren? They were one of the best teams in the world. They could easily have forced the hand of the org to keep Fiflaren. Or they could have said, right, we'll tell you what, since he's gone, as soon as our contracts are up, we're all leaving. He didn't do that. He stayed in. So as a result, wasn't loyal to Fifth Lauren. Then all the others got cut one by one by one. Not loyal to them. You stay around, keep playing the team. By the way, that's all fine. This is how sports work. You always have to at one point think of yourself and be a bit ruthless. That's how everyone operates. And by the way, they all would have done the same thing to him. They wouldn't have boycotted Vito would have gone elsewhere. They would have let him get caught if he'd have been the guy who'd gone to Freiburg's level and exists level. So then keep going through time. Throughout time, you've heard of what? Three, four scandals of people not getting paid and people having money stolen from them and people getting stuck about. He went through all that and just sort of went, this is fine, continue. Sat back, getting his money, playing for the org, making himself Nip Forest. That's how he will be remembered in his career. More than when he was in Fnatic and SK teams, he won championships. He will be remembered as Nip. He built that org with his brand. So then at the end, you might say, maybe he was just misguided and he was too loyal to Nip because of the brand and what it meant. Right? Let's rephrase that. Imagine I worked for a business that used to be really cool, but now it's owned by mobsters. If I keep working for them and I'm loyal, I'm just loyal to mobsters, mate. So you notice, here's why I always say the uncomfortable truth. 
That's not me saying Forrest's a bad guy. I just don't think that at the end of all that, I have to again get out Config's little fucking tiny violin and go, oh, it's so fucking sad, isn't it? No, because this guy turned down a million chances to go elsewhere. Like I said, 2014, they could have, by the way, had their pick of the world. If you don't know, at the end of 2014 is when all the fucking League of Legends orgs came in, Team Liquid, CLG, TSL. You could have gone to them in an instant. They'd probably even pay your buyout. In fact, a scumbag org like Nip might even have sold you and made like a little tasty little profit. And by the way, they just spun it that you were washed or something, but they did, they'd have made mad money. Then think of a few years later when the team started to go downhill, the Nip Magic era. At that point, you're already down eventually to like three players left. You could just go as a two or a threesome. By the way, I don't think they really cared about exist that much. So let's just say, get right in Forest in 2017 or something when they they go, right, you know what? We are going to go to G2 when they're FaZe Clan. Pick what mate, mouse spot. Pick what team you want. Team Liquid, Cloud9. There's another one. You think they couldn't have gone to NA any moment in time where people love to use marketing figures and legendary players. They had so many chances that at the end... After all this, we're talking now like, yeah, they blew, blew Forest Prime. Forest blew Forest Prime, mate. I, I actually give Forrest the actual respect that he is a responsible adult who can decide for himself what he wants in life. You know, he's like a 30 plus year old man. Is he like 32 or something? Like, 34. he's not. He's not a fucking 18 year old kid, guys. He's not some naive, bamboozled guy. I think what Forrest is is this. He is who he appears. He's a guy who just loves to play games. He doesn't want to know about the business and the politics. He just wants to every day go, right, these are my teammates, get my head down, frag a few people. Good job, guys. Did we win? Great. If we didn't, ah, fuck, whatever. Get him next time. He goes, plays some Dota, plays some fucking Legends of Magic and Might. I don't know any of the games. Plays WoW. But... <laughs> plays WoW or something. They go yeah. World of Warcraft, whatever. <laughs> like the Ultimate One, whatever, you know. <laughs> and then, yeah, then, then obviously he just gets someone's life. So the problem with that is like, yeah, I, I think that whole story is like, and also I'll just spin this one last detail in there. I wanted him to leave the whole time and go and try something else. Y'all are the one who loved that he was in Nip. Y'all the one who kept going, ah, it's a legendary team, the original squad. Y'all the ones, oh, I can't wait to see first and get. So why are y'all here and now and retroactively retconning it? Like, no, it was terrible. They kept trapped in that all. They were just making him sign those contracts and refusing to take other offers. Like, no, I, just, I think it just he just felt comfy where he was in his own fucked up way. Like he, he just got used to probably stop. It was some Stockholm syndrome that she applies in that case. You know, you also just think these are the people I know, it's where I'm going to like i get it it's a Probably very human you know, decision comfortable, comfortable where you're at at that point because if you're also keep in mind well oh i actually no i don't even know like if you're not thinking about it from the business perspective right like in sweden there is it is a very real thing in sweden as well where you're almost programmed not to want to make too much money if, if that makes sense like you the way the tax system works here if you're if you're taking a salary like they they've figured out that it, as soon as you hit like 50 grand a year that's it people just stop working harder and stop trying to earn more money because the tax is the way that it works unless you're going to make way more than that the way that the taxes work here if you're just making a salary you get you get fucked so like i wonder if that had anything to do with it as well where Forrest is like well he just got up to that point he's making decent money he's you know everything's taken care of and it's all good he's playing cs and he just gets comfortable in that in that kind of flow state and then just stays there because um, it, it's like other, it's that, or you have to make your own company and make a lot of money, and then make a make a make a make a all sorts of other different things in order to actually like make it worthwhile. Here's the like, angle I'll give you. Finally, one thing I hate in CS:GO is how unfair people are with legends. Like I'm just going to say this right now. Forest in CS:GO, not in all of CS, just in CS:GO. Forest is equally as legendary as Kenny S. Kenny S is a fucking all-time great. He's one of the best yeah. players to ever play. He was even better than Forrest in CSGO, in my opinion, over his career. Guardian is one of the best players to ever play CSGO. These are all bona fide. These are like first ballot Hall of Famers, mate. They just go straight in the Hall of Fame if you open one tomorrow, right? No one gives a fuck about them playing tier one CS anymore, Semler. Everyone even tells me there's trash, get them out the team. Why do they get to play? But magically, Forrest just gets to play. Fallen gets to play. Why? So they're not, by the way, I'm purposely picking players that are of equal greatness and even probably similar level. Like, it's not like Guardian would be total trash in a team. He'd be all right. It wouldn't be great. But guess what? Neither would Forrest be great. He'd just be all right, wouldn't he? And that's where you get into that kind of tier two team where you can see what, uh, what they bring to the table in terms of experience or something along those lines, right? And by the way, look at when people have tried that recently, these last few years, these tier two teams that have some very big names and they've all failed, right? Is there any one of them that succeeded? Apex, shit, Titans, Gorillas, shit. Like they're all failing as far as I can tell, right? The, even like the Apex fucking one Guardian was in. time yet. Like they haven't Which really one? been able to make a run. Apex, like the shots. They already canceled the fucking team, mate. Apex is out. I think they benched the whole squad and put them all in the transfer market. Or something, if you oh, really? It. Did they? I thought that was Titans. 
Uh, no, I Titans think, think, Titans is bench. Titans, the whole squad is up on the market. I, well, I haven't heard any with news it, about Apex. I'll, I'll find it for you. Let me see. I haven't heard any news about Apex, but you may be right. But Apex I, I, withdrew from the SEA Advanced. ESE advanced and said, we need time to reflect and evaluate. And then Asilian oh. and Chorzy have left the team. Well, okay then. <laughs> so yeah, no, that, that tier two project, I mean, I guess it just doesn't, it isn't a thing. Like, so even with the guys for whatever the reasons. I mean, I will say one reason I've actually learned myself. One thing we all underestimated in Counter-Strike, I know there's some Flashpoint with Cloud9. I know there's some, some of the super teams that have been tried. It's really hard to just make a team from scratch with no core. Because what you can at least rely on when you have two or three players that have played together is you've got like a basic identity. You've got some people who already have existing synergies. You might have a communication structure. Your IGL might have a couple of players he knows how to work with. When you bring a player together, like we would like making a HLTV fantasy team, just like one player from uh, Na'Vi, and then one player from FaZe, and then one player from Ents, and one player from Team Liquid, one player from Cla Like on paper, that'd be an amazing team. In the survey, it often turns out it's a shit team because it's not you're not building off anything. You're just throwing it all together. My analogy would be the classic one. You've taken chocolate chocolate flavor ice cream, strawberry flavor ice cream, salted caramel flavor ice cream, fucking banana flavored ice cream, and then you've taken like, I don't know, what's the fifth one, like fucking licorice ice cream. On their own, they might all be delicious together. That would be the most disgusting fucking mess of all time. Yeah, just the description. Yeah, it'd be horrible, wouldn't it? Because but in your brain as a little kid, you think, well, all of them together would surely be ultimate and the best. It's like, it doesn't really work that way. Like the joke is in this same analogy, what you actually probably want if you make a fucking ice cream sundae is like some chocolate, some strawberry, and like some base vanilla that's like kind of a bit boring to just keep it all together and just some simple cream you don't want anything too extravagant you want like a simple theme with a bit of variation a couple of things are a, a bit cool and the rest is actually just some quite boring base otherwise it's too much in it so i just don't well, think those um, teams work mate i think i think you can add players to teams like i actually think phase is the best example ever Go back in time, guys, and watch Revenge of By the Numbers. No, but watch, it wasn't called that. It was called Return of By the Numbers at the time. Go watch Return of By the Numbers from 2021, and you will see I have a consistent position the whole year, which is Rops will go to FaZe Clan from Mouse Spots. When he does, they only need that signing, and immediately they've got a chance to be really good because it'll put everyone else in different positions. And what you saw was everyone else at the end of the year told me I'm wrong because in Mouse, he was playing a bit baity, Rops was. He was looking like he wasn't trying to play like a team player, and his level had dropped off, and his numbers went down a little bit face clan was irrelevant at the end of last year they were a team that couldn't even make major playoffs like they could have like an upset over a smaller team or they could like occasionally beat a good team because they didn't have the firepower they had all of andrean and the whole thing was a mess right it only took one player change because all you did is bring in a much better player who filled a key role shifted a couple of other people around and he had all the base there carolican had just spent most of the year working with three of those players so as a yeah. result all he's doing is bringing one new guy in and then he can figure that guy out right put him sort of here do this it. even new because he's uh, he's also carrying against protege in a way so the perfect oh, it, it was it was yeah it was, it was to me it was the ultimate showing but everyone else was telling me like yeah it's the wrong move or like maybe you shouldn't go to fears he should go to g2 or if it's like child please it look how it worked out it's a fucking, yeah, no, that was one of the most slam dunk moves of all time for me no, it was perfect. I think, I mean, it really was, it wasn't it really just due to the fact that FaZe don't want to spend money on buyouts or whatever. And so they literally just waited Rops' contract out and then like, okay, as soon as he was what a free a fun market, one for you. Here's one no one's thought of. There right. was a recent interview where Tabson, at least in the headline, said something like that they would actually consider it might be necessary to go international. Put Forrest on Big Clan. Oh, that would be pretty cool, right? They're actually, listen, the thing with Big is they're never a terrible team. They've always got like a puncher's chance. Tabson's way too good to be on the team. Sirison's a pretty good AWPA. They sort of always have a canny little tactical style that lets them match up. Imagine you chuck Forrest in there if they're going to speak English. That would be a fucking interesting project, right? That would be wild. Tabson and Forrest on the same team? That would Obviously, be Swedes are also known for collaborating with Germans. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> taking a little bit of that money, taking a little bit of that Skrill yeah. home. That's just the Swedish way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Reference game on point. All right. They, they're, you know, talking about collaborating together. There's some. The thing is, if Forrest watches this together. episode, it probably just hurt his feelings. So whatever. Like, listen, man, ah. I, I actually do like you, but I have to just call it how it is. I don't give a fuck, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And style. also, that would be, I mean, it would be interesting. At least then you could actually start trying to take a risk. But then, I mean, then the question is whether or not Big want to take that risk. And if they're going to go international. Want to see more cool, funny, interesting clips based on topics from my content? Well, subscribe to this channel then, or, you know, be a pleb and don't.